thanks for the opportunity to speak today to all of you. It's an honor to, for me to be surrounded by people interested in learning how we can keep our environments and assets safe and healthy. I'm Raf Schervers. I'm Senior Product Manager for Access Control for Johnson Control, a manufacturer of security products. Today, I will uh, talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning, machine learning, which is a part of AI when it comes to databases. Let's go ahead here. Before jumping into the connection between AI and security systems, I want to, to speak about the definition of artificial intelligence. AR, AI or artificial intelligence is the theory and development of computer science able to perform tasks normally require human intelligence, such as visual perception, like symbolic or image learning, speech recognition, decision-making and translation between languages. With the neural computer architecture, we learn computers to identify the difference between a cat and a dog. When we learn the computer with thousands or millions of pictures, computers now know to identify the difference until there is a horse in the vision of a computer image, but that's another issue. So machine learning, well, an example of machine learning is pattern recognition. Computers are typical, very good in recognizing patterns because they can use a lot of data and dimension of data. Research and development teams are working on replicating human brain structure so computers become cognitive and can learn. And that's what we call deep learning. We are just in the beginning of a new dimension, so to say, in the security world, implementing artificial intelligence and machine learning into security systems is quite new, but you see that the investment in these new technologies already give great results. AI can make our, your security system very smart in many domains, uh, video monitoring, event management, in forensic research, reporting. AI is also the foundation of the high performance frictionless access control system, the facial recognition. AI or artificial intelligence, uh, what can it do for me? If you enter into a monitoring center with a, with a video wall, you, you will see operators watching video streams and, and, and very often hundreds of cameras divided of various numbers of monitors the question you would raise is how long can an operator keep that tension and sharpness on these video images uh, to capture the threat? Video analytics like object detection, dwell, lynch ring, and many more detectors are already assisting operators to concentrate on the relevant events to interact. AI goes a step further. AI can automate processes, perform tasks and take decisions, present information on the fly based on what we have, what we have learned system to do using artificial intelligence. This helps to increase the performance of operators and giving a holistic view and we can create a better situational awareness. An example, and I'm just gonna show you some examples. An example of AI used in video analytics is person re-identification or for retrospective tracking based on the image, uh, uh, an image and the look of a person, we can find the same person, not only in one camera footage, but through the whole video platform. We learned a system to recognize recognizable parts, a blue shirt, the facial uh, or and the behavior of, of people. And that's something that we can yeah, run through uh, across the whole video system, for example, that make, saves a, a, a lot of time. Artificial intelligence can be expanded to find people of interest very fast. Alert when a person of interest enters into the premises or looking for a specific object across multiple cameras. Making use of this technology, it, it also speed up forensic re investigations by eliminating irre irrelevant data across multiple cameras. So another example where we're using AI is, is uh, people counting based on video footage. This, this creates extra tools. See if health and safety is still guaranteed depending on number of people in a certain area. As a part of a unified security system, you can increase threat levels based on the crowd that are gathering together. 
live or retrospectively, we can filter out uh, irrelevant information, and that's a difficult word for me, irrelevant uh, information that disturbs operators' attention. So you can link this with other events, putting the threat level higher in, into a building, making sure that people inside the building are still safe and secure. We run frequently site surveys to investigate what really happens at large sites in terms of monitoring security management systems. What's the day-to-day -day task of an operator? We see that 85% of the access control alarms are caused by 10% of the doors. That's an effort, that's something that we learned during the many surveys. A security system over time generates a lot of, we name it, noise, but these are event notifications that are not always relevant for the operators and security management. What can we learn from that? Well, we can learn something that we can filter out certain events and certain alarms or the computer can learn certain things to ignore or to say, put in a priority. And you see that on the screen, green, yellow, red, these are all events and are all important, but an operator immediately can act on the red the orange or the yellow information that are coming to the screen. It's typical for an access control or security systems that we collect a lot of data about people and building, right? Uh, machine learning assists us to filter relevant information out of the great combined data that we co collect. We can detect patterns, predictable, predictable patterns, and anticipate on trends and changes in people and building behavior. So all these data, not only from access control, but also from the artificial intelligence embedded into the video platforms, the technical alarms, the environmental alarms and information that we get, we, we see a lot of information, people behavior, building behavior, and this together, that, that, that's really important information for security officers. An event takes about 10 minutes to investigate, uh, acknowledge and to report. That's what we learned also from our existing customer base. For a small site, perhaps it's not an issue, but for sites with hundreds or thousands of doors and cameras, this can cause issues. These events could lead over time that operators are ignoring these or even worse, get distracted and miss other real alarms. With machine learning, and using in the intelligence, we are able to analyze data such as door first open um, e events. Um, we are using the, the machine uh, intelligence to reduce the alarms notification to operators so that the staff can concentrate and focus on real the real events. But on the other hand, we can we can make the access control system reacting quicker and smarter with typical access control threat detection algorithms. When we measure permanently patterns, we can estimate maintenance required and keep the system uh, safe and healthy uh, over time. So that's where machine learning and artificial intelligence in security monitoring and access control will help. If you see the evolution in the building and security, um, buildings are becoming smart, and not only in IT perspective, but also in facility safety and security. We are able to support your core new uh, your core processes and improve your KPIs, right? So making sure that customers can concentrate on that what is valuable, this is the operation. Let's make uh, security, safety, and the facilities automated. Um, Today, smart buildings use technologies to provide new levels of safety, security, and optimization. This to make your day-to-day -day task easier and efficient. Some examples you saw in the slides are uh, the use of artificial intelligence or machine learning in video analytics or event management. Further, you hear more about blockchain technologies. Nowadays, to validate a person identity without the need for a central database, for example. I have some other examples uh, in, in the next slide. Artificial intelligence is used for systems optimization, but also the foundation for facial recognition. 
But if we want to use facial recognition for access control, there are some unique requirements compared to facial for video surveillance, like we presented in the previous slides. Facial recognition for access control authentication needs speed, um, accuracy, need immediate customer feedback at the door. Making sure we detect fake faces using anti-spoofing algorithm, facial recognition should be, uh, should be embedded in access control system administration for quick and easy enrollment and face validation. Facial recognition um, uh, within access control is also a cooperative situation. That means you need also people that are coming in front of the door looking in a certain direction, not looking away like it can happen also for facial recognition for video surveillance. So it is a corporate situation. Facial recognition is just in the beginning of, uh, of, 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 of the technology with 60% now of biometric sales, but we estimate that in the year and rear growth of 35%. With many of new technologies, we calculate with a customer acceptance time. Same as the first fingerprint or facial recognition on phones, people will need to get used to it. The moment of acceptance starts when the advantages are recognized. And that's also here with facial recognition uh, for access control. Biometric is something you are, it's not what you have, a card or a pin, what you know, no, it's what you are. It is actually almost impossible to fake that. It improves flow of users as well. It actually goes quicker than a card read. A good facial recognition reader are non-intrusive, frictionless and secure. Using AI with facial recognition, we can go a step further, doing anti-tailgating or tailgating detection or prevention, keep doors closed for non-recognized people that want to enter into restricted areas. Facial recognition can be used also as an intercom or reading QR codes uh, using artificial intelligence. I'm sure we will discover in the future more functionalities than pure people authentication with facial recognition, but we have to start somewhere. And yes, there are a lot of advantages of facial recognition, readers over card technologies or pin codes. <coughs> and there are also some objections in certain regions in the, around the world, <coughs> but it takes time to get these acceptance. <coughs> The Alcatraz Rock Facial Recognition Reader is based on an IP camera with an RGB and an IAR combination <clears throat> to perform likeness detection. It can be used in conjunction with a reader, a PIN code or a QR code, or just as a single facial recognition uh, reader. It just gives that non-intrusive ease of use authentication in the nowadays workspaces. And, um, and, and also here to show us in, in, in this video, it can be used as a two-factor authentication to increase the level of security next to a card read or a PIN code, or it can be used just as a one-factor authentication. That means it is recognizing people when they're approaching the door and entering into the certain areas. So there are multiple possibilities to use this for, uh, facial recognition. The 1FA single-factor authentication, two-factor authentication, with a, a reader or a three-factor authentication. That can be a, a card reader, the facial recognition, and a confirmation over the phone that you are the person in front of the door. There are multiple, multiple possible ways on doing uh, uh, or to increase the security. And, and typically the one-factor authentication is there to make it not only safe and secure, but also easy and improved convenience in the front of the door. Customers don't have to worry about the enroll of faces. Um, the Alcatraz rock can set to be learned to face and attached to the uh, card number. And that's what you see in the first video. Um, it, when you present a card, it, it does ask to uh, switch or, or turn your face in the different directions. And after a certain moment, you're enrolled into the system attached to that card number. The second um, video learn automatically the faces over time. So after a few attempts, the reader learned the person in front of the door. And after a few times, the card is not, is not required anymore. People can just 
uh, walk towards the door because they are recognized after five attempts, for example. And that's what we show in this uh, video. Many of you, of you know the real security issues, tailgating. This is the leading cause of security breaches. There are people and with good intentions you know, open the door for other people just that they can walk also in a certain areas. But that's a really threat. That's a really breach in your security system because you don't know who entered with that other person into that certain areas. Also, you in and out are uh, actually uh, showing errors. So with facial recognition, with that camera, you can do a prevent tailgating and you can also detect tailgating and alarm the issues and confrontate people with that, with that event that they left the door open uh, for certain pe uh, people and that created the security breach for that area or that building uh, concerned. So it's an important information that you get this also within your access control system so that you are learned about these potential security breaches in front of the door in that certain area. We are confident that facial recognition is a convenient, easy to use, non-intrusive authentication tool that will be used in any environment by people of all kind and for multiple purposes. And by the way, it's enhanced your security and safety um, of your people and assets. We're of course not the only one that that um, only one, but we have a great story to tell with the uniqueness of the Alcatraz um, um, uh, rock, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, based facial recognition reader. So many more information to come around this. And I'm convinced uh, it is important. Why is it important? I'm convinced that this is important because we, because we all aspire to, to innovation continuity. We believe in the new technologies. We want you to stay ahead of any potential security breaches. But we end security operations for mission critical, in, uh, uh, mission critical security. We keep working on security tasks to, for efficiency, we provide that additional flexibility also to provide tools for cost reduction over time. That's why we want to present this to you. And I'm coming at the end of my presentation here with this. With this, uh, thank you for thank you very much for your valuable time spent to to listen to this. When you have any questions, you can also feel free to pose this. Uh, we will answer your questions at, in the best possible way. So uh, with that said, thank you very much for listening.